Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to make a super cute little Valentine's pouch. It's just a nice creative way to put some treats in a little gift bag or whatever else you might be making. Maybe it's a bag full of super cute crochet scrunchies, which I also have patterns for that you can find in my um, list of tutorials. <laughs> Shameless plug for another tutorial there. Um, but anyway, in this video, you're going to, in this project rather, and please note that you can go ahead and download the printable um, PDF copy of this pattern if you would like to have the written copy, if you want to follow along to it, if you just want to have it to store away, maybe you keep a binder of patterns or something like that. Um, it is available on my Etsy shop. The link is in the description below. Um, so anyway, for this, you're going to need a five millimeter crochet hook, a yarn needle, a pair of scissors, um, two different colors of yarn. I'm going to be using red and white this time. In the picture you saw it was red and pink. That's the one I did last time. And also the yarn I'm using is a little different in this video. I'm going to be using Red Heart Soft. Um, in the original one that I made, I was using Soft and Shiny by Loops and Threads. It's a little pouch. It's a bag. It's not something you're wearing. So to be honest with you, it doesn't really matter if you're using the exact yarn that I originally did in the pattern or anything like that. You could even use like big chunky yarn. You could use like whatever. It just obviously will alter the size of the bag depending on what yarn you're using. But this Red Heart Soft um, is pretty much the same as the Soft and Shiny by Loops and Threads. So um, and no particular reason that I'm using this one instead, to be honest with you. It's just what I happen to have. I didn't have any more of that soft and shiny. Sorry, I'm changing the view there. Um, so anyway, let's go ahead and get started. So first we're going to make our starting loop. You're just going to wrap the yarn around your finger and cross it over. Lift up that little bottom piece and push a little bit through the loop and pull. And get your hook on that loop there. If I go too fast with any of the particular stitches, because this is not a stitch tutorial, this is a uh, tutorial for a specific pattern. If you need tutorials for specific stitches, if I move a little bit too quickly, um, there are some stitch tutorials in my channel as well. If you just go ahead and visit my channel, have a look at all the videos I've got going on there, you will see some stitch tutorials if you need any of these to be slowed down a little bit, okay? So let's go ahead and get started. We are going to chain 45. So you're going to yarn over your hook and, sorry, I just let go right there. <laughs> yarn over your hook and pull through the loop. So that's one chain. Yarn over and pull through your loop. Yarn over and pull through your loop. So you're just going to go ahead and keep on working that chain until you've gotten to a total of 45 and then come back. Okay, so now for our next step, starting in the second chain from your hook. So there's our first chain right there. We're gonna begin in the second one here. You're gonna half double crochet. So yarn over your hook, push it through the chain, yarn over and pull up a loop. And now you've got three loops on your hook. You're gonna yarn over and pull right through all three. And that's a half double crochet. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna work one half double crochet into every single chain all the way down, all right? So you can just go ahead again and pause this video, do a ha one half double crochet in every chain down the row, and then come back and I will show you what we're gonna do next. Now that you've finished working one half double crochet in every chain down your row, we started with a chain of 45, but because we began our half double crochets in the second chain from the hook, you're now gonna have a total of 44 stitches, okay? So as long as you have 44 stitches, you know that you're on track and that you haven't picked up an extra one or dropped an extra one and your work will turn out uh, the way it should, the way it's supposed to. Okay, so now that you've gotten to the end of your row, you're gonna chain one and turn your work. Now what we're gonna do is work a half double crochet in every single stitch all the way down the row. Now keep in mind when you're working in your stitch, cause when you worked in the chain, you're going through one, um, just it was pretty straightforward and there's only one little, it, it looks different when you're working through a stitch. So I'm gonna show you the top of the stitch here. When you're looking, um, for those of you that are maybe a little bit 
more new to crochet, when you look at the top of your stitch, you're gonna see like this little V shape. You gotta make sure that your hook is going through the entire stitch, okay? Both of those loops. So you're gonna push your hook into the stitch and you see how it looks there? I'm going right through, like that V is on top of my hook, okay? And that's how you know that you're going right through the, um, the stitch properly. So you're just gonna go ahead and continue working those half double crochets in every single stitch all the way down the row. And we're gonna continue this for a total of 15 rows, all right? So you're just gonna pause this video and you're gonna continue to work one half double crochet in every stitch all the way down. When you get to the end of the row, after you've done that last one, stitch number 44, you're gonna chain one and turn your work. And you're just gonna keep on repeating this until you have done it for a total of 15 rows. So we've already done one row of half double crochet. You're now working on your second, all right? So that's two. You're gonna keep going till you've done 15 and then come back. Okay, so now that you've finished all 15 rows, you're gonna take um, your hook out. Just pull a little bit of a loop up so you don't pull any stitches out. And then lay your work like this and fold it in half. Okay, make sure it's even. So this is gonna be the bottom of your pouch. And we're gonna be working, we're gonna to have to close up the sides um, soon, but I just want you to get an idea of what you're looking at right now when you look at your pouch this way. So you're just gonna eyeball where you want your heart to go, if you wanna do a heart, if you wanna do an initial, if you wanna do a word, whatever it is that you wanna do, have a look at where you want it to go. And then go ahead and get your other color yarn. I'm gonna be using white in this one. I used pink in the last one that I did. Um, so let me just show you here how we're gonna do this. You're gonna make a starting loop. Okay. And then you're gonna be working slip stitches to create, it's not gonna actually look like embroidery, but the, in, the idea of an embroidered effect, okay? So I'm looking at this as about the middle of my work. So this is where I'm going to put this. I'm going to start with the center of my heart. Okay. So you're going to push your hook through the front and get your loop onto your hook there at the back. And then just pull it through. Okay. And then you're gonna take your hook and go, it's not, um, it just, like I said, you're just eyeballing it. Um, so you might have to kinda, this part can be a bit tedious and annoying, but it's worth it when you get it done, but you might have to take it apart and do it again and whatnot, cause you're eyeballing it and you're gonna probably be very critical of yourself if you're anything like me, but just do your best. You're gonna push your hook, so going over into a next space here, you're gonna push your hook through, yarn over, and pull your loop right through the loop on your hook. So you're working slip stitches to attach the yarn on the front of your pouch here to make your heart or whatever it is that you're putting on the front. Okay, so you're just gonna go ahead and keep on working your slip stitches until you are happy with whatever shape it is that you wanna put on the front of your pouch. If you're leaving it plain, you could just go ahead and move on to the next step. But if you are going to be doing a heart or anything else on it, this is how you will get it onto the front um, is by using slip stitches. So go ahead and just finish up this step for yourself. Like I said, if you're leaving it plain, you could just leave this um, video running because um, I'll just move on to the next step with you. If you're gonna be putting something on the front, just push pause, finish what you're doing on your pouch, and then come back. Okay, so now that you've finished um, working on whatever it is you've decided to put on the front of your pouch, a heart, initial, a word, I've decided to leave this one blank. I just wanted to go through those motions with that white yarn to show you how to go ahead and accomplish um, what I had, had done on this one, how I did the little heart shape. Um, but I am leaving this one blank, so that's why you're seeing it like this. You right now will, if you've decided to put something on it, you'll be looking at it right now in front of you, okay? So now what we gotta do to move on to the next step, we're gonna flip our work inside out, 
okay? So whatever you've embroidered should be on the inside of this fold now because we're gonna close our seams along the sides of our pouch. So you're gonna get your hook back into your loop and then using slip stitches, we're gonna close the side all the way down. So you're just gonna push your hook into the corner of both sides. Yarn over and pull your hook right through the loop, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and work those slip stitches all the way down. And when you get to the bottom of this side, you're just gonna fasten off your yarn and then reattach it. So when you get down here, you're gonna fasten it off and you're gonna reattach on this side and do the same thing all the way down with your slip stitches and then okay, come back. So now in this next step, we are going to, so you should have closed both seams by now, still with working with our, um, our work inside out for the moment. We are gonna attach our other color of yarn. So whatever one that you are using as your second color, you're gonna make your starting loop, okay? And we're gonna attach it here at one of the seams. Oops, <laughs> wrong end of my hook there. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna go ahead and reattach it there. Pull that right through, because remember your work's inside out, so you're gonna want your knots and your loose ends all on the side. Okay, and you're gonna chain one. Now we're gonna work a single crochet all the way around. So you're just gonna push your hook through, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through both loops on your hook. And that's a single crochet. Okay, so you're just gonna go ahead and work your single crochets oh, evenly all the way around and then come on back. Okay, so something I wanna mention really quick for those of you that are um, looking at your stitch counts. So keep in mind that we've just doubled up our work essentially, because we folded it in half, right? So what you will have done is work your single crochets evenly all the way around. You would have been lining up with how many rows you have. So by now you should have a total of 30 stitches. Don't worry yourself if you don't, if you have you know a couple more or a couple less, it's really not a big deal. You're working on a pouch. All we're doing right now is making a frill. It's not a huge deal if you have you know one or two extra or one or two less. Um, but for those of you that really do like to keep track of your stitch counts, I just wanted to mention that for you, okay? So now to close this round, we're gonna close with a slip stitch in our chain one space that we started it with. So just gonna close that up with a slip stitch. So now we have ended that round. We're gonna start a new one now with a chain two. And we're gonna work three double crochets in every single stitch all the way around. So to do a double crochet, you're gonna yarn over, push your hook through your stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. So you now have three stitches on your hook. You're gonna yarn over and pull through the first two, yarn over and pull through the next two. So we're gonna do that two more times in the same stitch. Okay. And now we'll move on to the next one. So we're gonna work three double crochets in every single stitch all the way around and then come back. Okay, so now that you've finished that round, you are going to close this round with a slip stitch in the top of the chain two space. And we're gonna chain two again to start this next round. So we're gonna work two double crochets in the first stitch. Sorry about that. And one in the next. Two in the following. and one in the next. And you're just gonna keep on working that all the way around till you get back to the start, alternating between two, one, two, one, all the way around, and then come back. Okay, 
So now that you're back to the start, we finished that round, you're gonna close with a slip stitch in the top of that chain two space. And then you're gonna pull some yarn through and fasten it off. Okay, and we're gonna flip our work right side in and then what you're going to do you're just going to be using a yarn needle to hide all of your tail ends don't worry about how many tail ends you're seeing in mine i actually ran out of the white yarn and had to change it so that's why there's so many tail ends in my work um but you're just going to use a yarn needle to hide all those ends um, by weaving them in and out of the stitches on the inside okay so now what you're going to do is you are going to get a few pieces of both of the colors of yarn that you used to make your pouch okay and you're just going to cut a few even lengths of it together and you're just gonna go ahead and braid them. And then you're gonna take the braided pieces and weave them in and out of the double crochets along the base of your ruffle. And you will use it to have your little drawstring that can close the top of your pouch like this. See how it's weaved in and out there? all throughout so that's what you're going to be doing to create a little drawstring that closes your pouch and in case if you don't know how to braid i'm just going to give you a little quick um tutorial of its own <laughs> just on how to braid so you're going to have your three pieces you're just going to break up your your yarn into three sections um, however you want that to be okay you're gonna want something that holds the top tight I usually get like um, a little safety pin or something and just clip it to something to hold it tight and then all you're gonna do is just take your pieces on the side and fold them over the middle one so when it would look a little better if I had something to hold this down so it's tight but basically you're just gonna fold over the middle from right to left over the middle over the middle over the middle okay and you're just gonna that's how you're gonna braid it you're gonna do that all the way down obviously if you had something holding on to it it'll pull it tight um and that's it it's gonna create your drawstring you're just gonna tie it off on the bottoms you could even just go ahead and do you you don't have to braid it you can do single crochet um chains to um to go ahead and create your drawstring. It's whatever you wanna do, or slip stitches or whatever. There's lots of different ways to create your drawstrings however you want to, but whatever way you decide to go ahead and do that, you're then gonna just weave it in and out um, along the base of your ruffle. And that's it, you'll have your cute little Valentine pouch. Mm -hmm.